Whoa, 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 easy there, my boy. My boy, calm down, calm down. What is wrong? Hmm? You want some Indiana? Where's your mouth? Where's your mouth gone? Hmm? Hmm. Indiana, you look a little bit different in size. You, you know, what's happened to you? What's happened to your overall shape? No, Indiana, you've gone flat. You've gone flat. The tip is all saggy. Poor Indiana. Where's Wes? 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 Yes, you. Can you fix Indiana, Wes? Please. Wes? Wes? Ah, it's just a wall. Mmm. I see now. Don't worry, Indiana. You can go to bed. You go to bed. Mmm. Where am I at? Where am I at? Am I still at Saddle Saw Bar? What's this? A hand? What, what type of hand job did I come across? Um, where's the horse? Ah, there we go. Finally, I found Brenner's horse. Come on, boy. Go on, boy. You can do this. Yeah, there we go. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. You can do it, man. Come on, man. Where's the head? Where's the head gone, huh? I'm really confused right now. Whoa. I think I might have broke the horse. I probably should get off. Whoa. Okay, so apologies about that. Things got a little bit weird. Probably just recovering from New Year's Eve after bloody Andrew Culver decided to drop a bowl of beers behind. And I think some fucking Montello local decided to pour a little bit extra in. I don't know what went on after that, mate. I really don't. But I guess it was like depicting like an example because I... Me, I try, how do I express myself? Oh, come on. I try to be as artist, artistic as possible. Yeah, man, you know, got to be like that. If I'm not, then where do, do, do I go? Uh, maybe Fiverr? Yeah, it could be like that. Yeah. Now, just very quickly. Okay, just very, very quickly. Whoever it was now, someone said, if you do a salty pancakes voice, you've got to stutter. What would happen if salty pancakes was out in the freezing cold in just like a short sleeve top? Would you get any words out of him or not? Anyway, let's just put that aside. Yes, I am normal. Indiana is, no, not Indiana, sorry. I'm getting all mixed up once again. The banana is resting back there. But there is a problem, okay? I've not I've not given it a blow. Not yet. The problem is it's deflated, okay? And I don't know why. Hopefully there's no cut marks or holes or whatever, but it looks like it looks like the banana needs blowing. So I'll, I'll have to try that afterwards. Sounds so weird when you it sounds so weird when you wear it like that, but you know, does Gorilla is Gorilla Jack here? Is Gorilla Jack experiencing any issues with his banana? Um, you know, when it's diff like if you've got an inflate like Weedleby, do you have any inflatables in the house yourself? Do you have to blow any of them? Is it successful? Does it work? Is it worth trying it on the banana? I, I don't know. But I guess my, if it goes wrong, I'll just have to take it to the hospital, the banana, okay? Then it should receive some treatment. So if you haven't already guessed, which to new viewers, people coming in for the first time, are going to be very confused and traumatised. We are looking at Dylan Rounds today, okay? Kind of a day or two late, but starting off with the new year 
a new video, a new me. <laughs> no, scrap that. I'm the same basic bitch. Yeah. But no, we're looking at Dylan Rounds today, doing like a discussion, keeping the case alive. We've seen patterns and trends with different cases. Whilst I may have stuck with Dylan Rounds and other people went on to other cases, such as the Kylie Rodney case, everybody transitioned onto that. And then in a short space of time, it was resolved to an extent. Body found, car found, etc., etc. I stayed with the case. Fast forward to the Idaho 4 one, had a little look at it. Everyone transitioned onto that. In a shorter space of time, it was resolved to an extent, person arrested, but I still stuck with Dillard rounds. And I'm glad I've been able to do that in a way. I'm glad. And it's been able to keep the case alive to an extent. You still got Ty Corbin, you still got Lance doing their own stuff, searching, which is also practical. Um, not seen as much from the spiritual card readers, psychic readings and all of that. But you never know, that might come in different waves. I do have a like a small list of videos to get through, but I wanted to do this one first because we're starting the year off and just transitioning on into it with ease. So we're not getting too deep, okay? What that will also include today is we'll take a look and continue that forum discussion, analyze that, see what's going to be talked about next. I think I was supposed to do that previous in a previous video but because of time and, and the length of that video there wasn't enough time to fit it in so we can do that now. You can also check back on some comments. I did see an interesting one by the Shack Lady so we'll read that out and get to the bottom of that okay and yeah that's about it. As for the Find Dylan Rounds Facebook page still quiet um, no surprise there you got the people doing like the Happy New Year messages, wishes and all of that, as, as you would, you know, see. So, um, yeah, it's been quiet there. Not heard anything from Candice Cooley. Um, I don't think Doug's got any interviews with Candice lined up at the moment. As for the mob crew, Chris, he did a recent video kind of in relation to Dylan Browns, but also all the other cases that have gone on, maybe 2022, the year. Uh, so far through, there were some high profile cases, mysteries, some solved, others not, still ongoing. You know, would you agree? Would you agree that the year 2022 has been more deeper, darker or more mysterious, interesting than previous years when it comes to like true crime and mysteries or not? Leave your thoughts down below. I guess we could actually start it off with a poll in a way, looking back. I'll word it kind of differently and then you can vote and then have a like a final option where you can choose your own uh, year. If you've got one, you list it down below. Okay. And speaking of the live chat, aside from the voting, as we go on into this video, you can share your thoughts, opinions, reactions and talk about whatever. Um, in recent time, there's been a bit more consistency. Um, not as many rats. Even if there are rats, that doesn't matter, you know. Uh, do I actually see them as rats? No. Um, I don't, I, ju I just see them as a person. But when it comes to the Kenny Veach case, hmm, and looking back at that, yeah, there some of those people. We will look at that at some point, okay, don't you worry. But for now, Let's move over to the forum, continue on. I think it might be from page seven, page eight. It might also in incorporate the discussion of Kurt Wadsworth. Take in mind, I will make a video about Kurt Wadsworth, a more focused one, right? That will come up. Um, the other one in which I'm waiting an email response. And then there's another one, then another one, and maybe another one, okay? So, so you get the idea. But I don't want to just rush on in. If I rush on in, I might forget something. I might word it incorrectly. And we don't want that. Okay. So let's begin this discussion now. Okay. So here we are to begin with. Start from the bottom. I did hear somewhere. I can't remember who it was from now. Someone was like, huh? 
why why are you uh, making these videos looking back at comments? Huh? That don't make any sense. Well, it's looking back at the discussions to answer people's questions, just like how you would if you was to respond after uploading that video of yours. Whereas in this format, it's a little bit more interactive, right? Instead of just silently typing back on the keyboard, I'm verbally responding back here. And the majority percentage preferred this style. Now, I don't know if the user was called Just Fast Eddie, Fast Eddie. I'm not too sure if it was him that mentioned it. I think he did complain once or twice previously, but the thing is, when you look at his profile picture, his profile picture, the face, looks very similar to that guy that was riding that small wooden horse outside of that motel, the last motel video I did, which is quite interesting. It's like, my god, man, cannot find a big enough horse for you? Shame. Got to take it out on the little horses. Pick someone on your own size, man. Come on. Yeah. Just what I thought. But let's just put that aside. Okay. What was this all? Oh, yeah. I wasn't able to fit everything in a title. This is the thing with YouTube, if you wonder. With YouTube, you've got 100 characters, right? 100 characters, that's the limit for a title. And you know me, sometimes the titles can look like paragraphs. And you want to cram as much within the title to explain it all or to get an overall explanation. Sometimes you're just limited to space, so I couldn't fit everything in. Let's just go through this anyway and see if there's anything. Joseph says, well, we know there's a massive misinformation always flying around the Wadsworths, and it's always needless BS. They would just, uh, they would just get honest. We know that won't happen because that would probably lead to their arrest. Looks like a juicy show. <laughs> well, yeah. I guess it was that one. That was uh, the one where I was doing that dodgy phone call with pancakes. <laughs> Who knows, it'll be any more in the future. <laughs> oh, well. But yeah, um, as you know, I've not looked deeply into the Wadsworths' cur or like the interviews, but, you know, in the back of my, my mind was like, yeah, mm, so, yeah. And then with time, people have you know, giving their own thoughts and opinions, saying that, oh yeah, you just keep switching and changing the story. And it's like, indirectly, I was time efficient because I was looking elsewhere instead of sitting around trying to listen in to Kurt at the time. Does that make sense? Like, just from my point of view. Um, but what I'm doing now is kind of playing catch-up, okay, when it comes to Kurt Wadsworth. And it's good that some people in recent time in the live chat did bring out snippets of information mentioned in past discussions, whether it be Indiana. Oh, I'm saying the name wrong again, Indiana. I was saying it the posh way. Sorry, I'll try and start sounding like a peasant again. And then you've got some other users as well, like newer people that came in just pointing things out. And it is... It's definitely very helpful and useful, you know, especially when it's like a six hour long thing. I mean, Indiana, best demonstration when she did a summary comment of what was talked about and it was uh, of it was of use, right? So, uh, yeah, let's just move on before we get to... Oh, there we go. So we've got Ty Corbin here. Ty Corbin says, the fat ass crybaby Michael Lee Irma, also known as... Salty shit cakes can dish it out but can't take it. Next, I will drive by and video you are house just as you have done to mine. Why are you and Kurt Wadsworth protecting James Brenner? Did he call you that Saturday, Kurt? Why won't you take a polygraph, Kurt? And last of all, you fat pumpkin turd who told you the phone was in the pond, ask the right questions. Warlike Raph. Oh, is, oh, is he directing that at me? Wait, am I the fat pumpkin? Hmm. I mean, I'm not exactly orange at the moment, though my nails are purple-blue, so I must be dead on the inside. I mean, I'm not far off, am I? 
You know, pumpkins, the undead, ooh, spooky. Just fucking put a candle in my fucking head, light it on, and watch me burn! Yeah! It's not, no, it's not Dragon Ball. No, I'm not evolving. No Zed awakening. No Kamehameha. More like, fuck me, I'm burning from the inside, man. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as for Ty Corbin mentioning that, well... First of all, it's to do with the gloves are off. Ty Corbin isn't messing around. He's saying what he thinks. So that's a positive to begin with. No messing around. Straight to the point. And as for those questions you should be asking, yes, as I said, it's under control. Ty Corbin, it's under control. Because I do have a video coming up depending which order I do it in, of course, it's got to be of a certain order and it will cover certain questions and theories and etc, etc, etc. It's all under control, okay? But yeah, the only thing is, the name Michael Lee Irma, the last name Irma, wouldn't that get really confusing? Like, if you had mm, no thanks and Irma, can you imagine like, um, like the, the introduction? It's like, Welcome to um, No Thanks. We've got um, on um, No Thanks. So, um, what do you think of um, No Thanks? There's a lot of umming and ahhing. My God, that would get so confusing. And then if I joined the bloody panel, because I do say a lot of um, mm, um, mm. no, not um, no thanks. Um, so what about this? Um, no, not um, no, Michael, not talking about you. I'm, I'm, I'm umming and ahhing. I'm just doing a um, no, 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 no thanks, no thanks, no, no thanks, not in no thanks. I don't want ice cream, but um, no thanks. I'm not talking to you. No, um, I'm not talking to you either, Michael. Oh, for fuck's sake, that would be a disaster. Oh my god, wow. Yeah, mm. I mean, it's it's like um, uh, saying no in um, Darija, Moroccan Arabic, it's la, you, you hear that song where it's la, 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 and it's almost like saying no, 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 in translation, mind has been blown, just like that banana back there, amazing, but yeah, um, Ty Common saying what he thinks, what does Louis say? You look really pale. You need some rest. <laughs> I put up more pale now. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm just a vampire. Okay. You know, you've seen my teeth, right? Hell, you saw that time. You remember in the chat? You saw that time when I went through that vampire transformation. You know, one minute I'm all normal. Next minute I've got. A rubber bat. I've got vampire teeth. They've gone yellow. I like, I don't know what happened. You remember that? I'm sure you do. Okay. Do you think Dylan will be found honestly? Well, I did respond at the time, but I'll respond once again. And, you know, we'll do a poll right now. We can do another poll on the spot. Do you think Dylan will be found honestly? Okay, we can, we can. Uh, share on Louis's co um, comment question. In my opinion, what I would say is due to recent time with what Candice Cooley was talking about vaguely, there was, there was stuff going on, things developing, we can't release it at this moment in time. Whenever there is something like that, then there's always hope that Dylan can be found or anyone. It's when it goes completely flat dead, quiet, and there's, like, no movement. When there's no movement, then there's not much hope. You get what I'm saying? But with the external people going out there searching, and then whatever going on with Candy Cooley, Justin Rounds, whoever, okay? I guess how it could appear at times, if it's not all broad broadcasted, mentioned on YouTube, and you looked at all the information on YouTube, you could be thinking, oh... Dylan's not going to be found because there's no more talk, there's no more discussions, there's no more updates, oh no. And then it would like feel like that, right? But then if you get channels in between, which try and keep the case alive whilst, you know, trying to 
break things down, understand stuff, and maybe provide updates if possible, then it adds a little bit of hope to the people that rely on YouTube or just focus on the YouTube platform, right? If you don't go elsewhere. So that's the idea. Now, I don't know where I heard it from now. Someone mentioned it. There was another platform, but I just can't remember. Was it Rumble? Was it BitChute? I think it was a completely different one. It was like some weird black background platform with colourful text. It, it wasn't like YouTube, but it was like an alternative. And there was like some videos on there to do with Dylan Rounds, but it was like lesser known channels who probably don't participate on YouTube, which is interesting because this is, this is one of the things, right? YouTube is one of the main platforms where like videos can be uploaded and stuff. But just like with forums, you go into the odd few quieter websites, harder to reach ones, less known ones. There could be valuable information there or interesting questions, discussions and findings. It's what happened with the Kenny Veach case and even like with videos too. So if it's possible to do with Dylan Rounds, then it will be done. Uh, I wouldn't say I found much at the moment, but... If I do, I'll uh, share it with you, okay? Or if you found stuff too externally, just feel free to highlight it if you want to, okay? Cleo says, nada, I am speechless. Okay. <laughs> what do I say to that? I don't know. Just breathe, just breathe very slow. Wes, there we go, good video. Man, yeah, my man. My man, Wes. Okay. Oh, this looks like a, a newer account. I've not seen this one before. Welcome to the channel. TX Mustang. Oh, this person must be from Texas. There's a couple of people from Texas that participate in the case in general across different channels. So that's good and also interesting. They say, I think Kurt knows something and Salty Pancakes is friends with him. Salty, I noticed, either puts Dylan Rounds or Jim Terry in his titles to get views that is sad. Thanks for your videos. You're welcome. Hmm. Interesting. Either puts Dylan Rounds or Jim Terry. Yeah. I mean, I've not kept like on track with all the pancakes videos, but if you look at Jim Terry, most of the time I would say his titles are like Jim Terry chat, late night chat, VIP chat. You know, it's to do with his name. Uh, his group, his community, talking, hangouts, wild times, you know, those type of words and stuff. When it comes to the Shack Lady, majority of her videos are either titled Dylan Rounds or the thumbnail is of Dylan Rounds and... You know, whether it be the old older live streams, which were like 11 hours long, or some of the recent ones, which might have been like three, four hours long. A certain portion of it is to do with Dylan, but then the rest is to do with other stuff. I mean, I can understand it. I mean, on a much smaller scale, it's just like how, like with my videos, it's on, a, it's on about Dylan Rounds or something to do with the Dylan Rounds case. And then the other portion, other half of the video is to look at maps and just other random more light-hearted stuff, but I split it down the middle so you can see the transition, so it's clear. So there is that. Um, as for pancakes, I've seen it where he's like late night cash giveaway, uh, uh, driving and talking or something, live stream. I don't know if it always mentions Dylan or Kurt. I think in more recent time though, that, that is the case. I mean, we can check. Um, should we check right now? Right, so here we are, just looking at this. I think, I don't know, it can be an experiment in itself. Whenever I do like, um, like a video or a little bit of coverage of Pancakes, but directly on his channel, that seems to be where it all goes downhill. Okay, so just be aware of that. But I just wanted to check the titles, just like what that Texas Mustang said if you know what I'm saying. I know some of his videos are um, like members only or private, so there's that as well. Look at that from a month ago. Gorilla Jack, 
okay, Montello, Dylan Rounds with the same thumbnail as the Shack Lady. Interesting. Almost the exact same as the Shack Lady. Hmm. Friday night cash giveaway, yeah. Uh, Salty Live with Kurt Wadsworth. Okay, that's one. Salty and Crew, Dylan Rounds, that's another. Drive, Tour Park, that's basic. Um, open night panel, don't seem to mention the name there, but it could do later on, it says dot, dot, dot. Exposes all the Dylan Rounds conspiracies, that's another one. Dylan Rounds conspiracy, that's another one. Do we have any more? The shorts, they're dodgy. Videos, Jim Terry, Jim Terry, Jim Terry. Dylan Rounds, Dylan Rounds. So, okay, I understand. That makes sense what Texas Mustang is saying, how it's either um, Jim Terry or um, to do with Dylan Rounds. And there's a bit on Kurt as well. But I guess it's one of those things where if you are talking about a person, a thing, a case, then it kind of makes sense to mention it in the title. But I get the observation made by Texas, I do. What does Louis say? Fancy letting the crop fail after all Dylan's hard work. That's terrible. The way it's been worded by Candice Cullen, and I think other people, is Dylan has had somewhat successful crops the previous years. Not fantastic, but, you know, managed to do something. So it's not like the very first time ever this gone to waste. Um or like the very first time ever something good has come out of the whole farming experience and then it's gone to waste. I should have worded it like that. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Whoa, where's calm down? Is he hungry? That howl just knocked me off my feet. Wait, why am I just going for a dark conversation? <laughs> I thought it was going to like lead to some story, but it didn't. What does Judy say? Judy Wickham. Please don't use F word. F word. What? For, forgotten, forget, forwards, fly, flying, flower, floppy, flaccid. We're not supposed to say those words. I might have said them already. Oh no. What's this? Okay. So when seeing this comment by Judy, default profile picture, unfortunately, it just kind of makes me think of that clip where the shack lady had to go away or something and then Jim Terry started saying, fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah. <laughs> that ship, that, the ship, <laughs> it's a slip of the tongue. That clip, fuck me. That clip should have been used right here, but I didn't want to get, like, copyright or anything because I don't know what Jim Terry's like when it comes to that, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, um, hmm, Judy, Judy, Judy. Oh, oh, Judy. We've got Kongzilla. Yeah, Kongzilla. Madman. Says, a buddy of mine got killed for $10 in quarters years ago by four people. 5k will make people do crazy things. So that is um, uh, rough. Sorry to hear that. Um, I mean, based on get off that concept, that $200,000 reward, reward money, you thought people would be jumping out of their seats, right? To do something, to say something. But it seems as if, you know, if you've got some kind of constraints, whoever is out there roaming about free, that... Uh, what do they value? Freedom, um, a family member, a friend, someone they know, over the money because they don't want to be imprisoned. Could be. I mean, you've got to also take in mind that, like, the likes of Montello and other areas out and about, if people are struggling for money and some participate in crimes, other people could participate in trying to get this reward money, but that's not the case. So it seems very weird in a way. There's been other cases around the world. There's been lower reward money pools up for grabs and all kinds of people were trying to, you know, solve it and stuff. Like, even on YouTube, when you had those ARG 
mysteries and people trying to crack the code. You had all these forums and members joining, trying to help one another solve the codes, trying to solve the messages, the images, the videos, whatever it may be, trying to get to the bottom of it. And that was voluntary. No money, no rewards, nothing. Just because they wanted to. And yet, this Dylan Rouse case is not like to that extreme, that extent. Interesting. What does Brian say? Came for Dylan updates, stage for the amazing impressions. Right on. Well done, Brian. Very, very good. Yes, of course, of course. Fantastic. Bellissimo. Fantastico. Northwoods Adventures. Northwoods, make sure you, um, Gorilla Jack or Wes is not in the area. Too many trees, too much bark, too much roughness. My God, don't be going in the morning time. Go later on. <laughs> I don't know what I just said then. So funny, all the characters in the comment sections remind me of Pink Panther episodes or The Monk. You all like Raph. I always enjoy watching. Appreciate that. Shout out to Northwoods Adventures. And speaking of adventures, I'm sure there'll be more adventures to come when it when it comes down to those map videos and all kinds of weird, dodgy places, right? Because we have already come across a wide range of that stuff and I'm sure we'll find much more along the way. Okay. We've got Ellen Berg, or as Joy Perry would say, Ellensburg. Fucking hell, Ellensburg. Is that some kind of dodgy alternative from Wish.com of the recreation of the Gettysburg with Ellensburg involved? The fuck? <laughs> What's going on? Is this some kind of new movement? <laughs> Never seen it before. But yeah, there's Ellen, um, the Ellenberg. Uh, you, she might, you might have seen her in uh, other live panel chats. Um, yeah, good of them for the super chat appreciate it very good of them okay what else have we got deb d i'm not stupid okay obviously because i know i knew what you were always talking about equipment wise what <laughs> um wait what like my equipment or equipment of like other hikers i don't know i'm kind of confused now right well i guess we can um refer back to that at a later point if we find an answer <laughs> what's going on let's move on to just the next video just to catch up on the comments too right so here we are on the last one latest video i should say um this was the new year's eve one the video i could not make it okay but I'm here now. You don't think I am? I'm in the chat. Yeah. I think someone was saying, oh, Raf is secretly watching the chat as it all goes along. Am I, am I not? Oh, will we ever find out? Don't know. I don't know. Maybe you've got to look a little bit closer and then you will know. But not too close. Okay. My breath. <laughs> what the fuck am I on about? Let's just carry on reading. Okay. Indiana says, This is sweet. We'll like Raph to leave a video for us whilst you are away doing your own thing for New Year, to which I hope you have a great time. And for all of us, may 2023 bring better times. Happy New Year. Okay. Uh, was, was, that was like a, a new um, depiction of what Indiana might sound like. Com it could be completely different. It could be like, We're doing fucking videos! I don't know! It's like, okay, calm down. You know, one of those things, sometimes you, you just got to guess on the spot. I can't remember who it was now. There was someone in, not the last video, but the video before that, who said, oh my God, I better make sure my hubby doesn't hear all the noises and moaning going on, on the screen. Oh my God, I hope they don't find out what I'm watching. And it's like, don't worry. You know, all I was doing was lifting a weight up and down, but... Unfortunately for me, it was in the, the wrong angle, so it looked kind of worse than what it was actually. But see, you know, it, all it was, it was just like um, a, a certain exercise technique. So if anyone did walk in and it was like, what are you watching? You know, what's all that noise going on? You can just say, okay, and this applies to anyone, okay? So anyone listening right now, 
if for whatever reason down the line you end up being in a compromising situation in which you're watching my video and there is the odd strange sound being emitted from the speakers and you're like oh no how do I explain this to whoever is around just simply say oh it's just warlike ref being dodgy once again nothing more and I'm sure I'm guaranteed when you say that Whoever is nearby, a loved one or not, or simply a stranger or a person by, might have broken into your house, they'll simply nod their head, give a round of applause and say, We the people agree with Warlike Ralph! We are ready! You know, it's as simple as that. Let's continue. We've got Stephen the Turkey Handler. Does this mean anything to you? Um, oh, it's a short clip. I won't click on it yet because it might be copyright, I don't know. But I will check that out after, okay? Patsy, Happy New Year's. Johnny Ray Baker, looks like a new viewer, says, total of 27 full days, not a lot. What's that in relation to 27 full days of covering the case? Um, I'm not quite sure. Actually, to be honest, I think what he could be on about is um, the bit, which one was it, where it said, like, the detective spent 650 hours on the case. Is that what Johnny means? That's equivalent of 27 full days looking at it? Could be. Sometimes comments can be a bit vague, so you've got to try and interpret them yourself. Oh, God, what's this? TJ Verts. Oh, no. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. This person, I'm sure, was the one that got a bit triggered when I was talking about airbags and describing people of a certain size as airbags or something. We can, we can explain it scientifically or however right now. I mean... Like, in a situation like this, Weedleby, come here now. Stop driving down that road trying to record that goose, that turkey, whatever it may be, walking down that fucking duck. Get out the car, come here now, and support me. Me too movement. Warlike ref movement. Come on. No. But let's um, just read what this person has to say first of all. So TJ says, this piece of shit, also known as Warlike ref, is dangerous. He states fat people do not feel pain, leading unintelligent people like himself to beat up fat people. <laughs> because, <laughs> because it doesn't matter, because they won't feel pain anyway. He claims his hate is based on science. If you are interested in actual factual science, there are factual science that states the exact opposite. Fat people feel more pain and are far more vulnerable to injury from being beaten. You are a shitty hate field emoji. Right, so basically to summarise it, supposedly Warlike Raph is a dangerous person. He's unintelligent. He likes beating up fat people. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, no. Do you not remember Weedleby? You know, a fat ass obscuring the camera lens. We thought it was the second coming of a, an eclipse or an asteroid hitting the Earth. Did I handle her with care? Yes. Does Gorilla Jack handle Weedleby with care? Yes, might be a bit rough on, on the outer sides, but, you know, it, it it's fine. No harm's done. Going around beating fat people. Who do you think I am? James Brenner. Have I turned into James Brenner? Oh my God, my stomach is looking a bit big. Oh my God, if I'm fat as well, then we're all part of the same thing. Come on, man. What is going on? Right. It's an on-the-spot analysis. We're going to do it anyway to clear things up. And okay. Kim, let me get down on one knee. No, I'm not proposing. I just need to get into a comfortable position for this. So I'm just going to read it out again. He states fat people do not feel pain. Well, to be more specific, 
specific, what I said was there was a chance that people who may appear kind of fatter or have more layers on the stomach area will feel less pain. When the likes of Glitter Galaxy said her contact, her associate, her colleague or friend, whatever it may be, whether they're in the hot tub or not, clothed, unclothed, I don't know, they said they were kind of on the bigger side, they broke their arm and it hurt like hell. Well, of course it will hurt for just about anyone that feels pain, they will feel that pain because it's an internal injury. It's an internal thing. It's not on the outer surface, right? Just think, when you get a paper cut, that can feel worse than a deep cut. A deep cut goes through the nerves, goes through the layers of skin, right? You get the adrenaline too. So you don't feel a pain immediately. You might not feel as much. Whereas with a paper cut, it's on the tip of the surface, cuts through partially the skin, and it remains open. And if you bend your finger or something, it will open and close, and you'll feel that stinging sensation, right? It's kind of like that on, on the outside almost, not quite deep on the inside. So the pain is different, right? As for the stomach area I was specifically talking about, because I would know, because I was a fat twat in the past in the stomach area. Not as bad now. So I would know the difference, okay? I've seen countless videos online where a person has been punched in the stomach area and did not react. Whereas a person who didn't have much body fat, when they got punched, they felt it. It reached, it reached like the surf, it reached internal more, right? You see a lot of boxers, right? Look at Tyson Fury. My name's Tyson Fury. I might look fat, but I'm the world champion. No one can beat me. I am unbeaten. I am Tyson Fury. My voice is rough. I don't know why, but I'm going to do you harm, you big stiff idiot. You see what I'm saying? Look at Tyson Fury. You look at his build, okay? And he can absorb hits. He doesn't go down that easily, right? So, uh, yeah. The difference between internal pain and external and the case of like whipping someone in the stomach area can be external, okay? It's like if, you, if you've got like punched or something there, if more layers, okay, it absorbs it. Just like a, like a cushioned effect. Anything else? What did it say? It says... He himself to beat up fat people because it doesn't matter because they won't feel pain. So this person is basically saying that I go around on a daily basis whipping people, beating up people left, right and centre. I don't know what that person is on. I mean, just, just remember, TJ, I'm one of the few people who don't have any mugshot photos when it comes to people within the Dylan Browns community. So I must be doing something, right? Um, what else? If you are interested in actual factual science, there are factual signs states the opposite. Fat people feel more pain and are far more vulnerable to injury. If they are far more vulnerable to injury, why is it when it comes to WWE wrestlers, some of the fatter ones never have been injured or been out for that long? When they've taken bumps and falls to the mat, the side of the ring, the ring steps, the outside, wherever it may be, you know, that level, that layers of fat have absorbed the impact. Where, you know, if you're very skinny um, or you just got less fat on you, you hit the ground, it's not a cushioned landing, is it? It's more hard. Hard on hard, it can break. Soft on hard, it can absorb. Soft on soft, it can be very bouncy and squishy. So you get the idea, right? You're jumping up and down. You land on a trampoline. It breaks your fall, okay? You jump off a building and you hit the concrete. It doesn't break your fall. It literally breaks you. And you, you either end up seriously injured or it's fatal, right? Whereas if you were a tennis ball or something, right? Not in terms of uh, levels of pain, but just in terms of how you land. 
as soon as you hit the ground, of a certain height, first of all, you bounce back, right? You see, kind of like the trampoline type thing. So that's what I'm, this is what I'm talking about. So, uh, yeah, apologies about that. Dr. Andrew just had to step in for a second. Let's move on. Yeah, of course, TJ typically has a default profile. Cleo says, Happy New Year. Well, like Ralph, like the intro song, can't forget the outro. Yeah, that outro was whipping myself 23 times. <laughs> what a coincidence. Joseph, so sorry I missed the show. Okay. Smooth fishing, Happy New Year. Beatriz, I think that's a new viewer. Shout out to them. Happy New Year. What does Terry have to say? Oh, it's a couple more pair. Terry says, they made mistakes like his truck. They should have inspected it before it was moved. If they made that mistake, what else was or wasn't done normally? They shut down a crime scene until they've investigated it completely. Uh, that's the thing. From like the words of Candice Cooley, it was never truly treated as a crime scene. It was never taped off to begin with. And I guess it's one of those things where, because it dragged out for so long... You know, kind of like with crime scenes, if it was one. I mean, in your in your own thoughts, based off crime scenes you've heard of, seen, how long do they s tend to stick about, right? Are crime scenes a couple of days, a couple of weeks, months? What do you think? I mean, as for that missing person body found um, near me, well, not near me, like... A bit of distance away that was cornered off for like several weeks i don't know about months i didn't keep track of it but there was a fair bit of time and it meant no one could enter pass through in between i'm sure the odd person might have done at night but there was a police presence almost 24 7 so yeah whereas the likes of the dylan rouse case there wasn't a police presence 24 7 there and i guess you know you put aside potential police incompetence i think it just comes down to the environment and the distance i think some people were saying that the police has has to cover like 50 miles to get there in the first place or the nearest police station sheriff's department is like 52 miles away so it takes time to get there and back every day it can be quite taxing wearing physically and maybe financially possibly that's a possibility right um and without, with being in the middle of the desert, as for staying there, it's not quite practical, is it? I guess you could take some items with you, camp out there, but is that what the police would do? Is that Would they tend to do something like that? Maybe not. It's not practical for them, maybe. Like, if this was all done in a more urban area or just like a more heavily populated place and it wasn't as harsh and rough, the desert, the terrain, the environment was different. It was, there was like buildings and shops nearby and services. Then maybe it would have been treated more seriously as a crime scene, but because it was in the middle of nowhere, maybe they thought, well, no one's going to go here. No one's going to step on the land, so we'll just keep it as it is. And because uh, we're not camping out here, then there's no point in doing this or that. But then again, they could have maybe opted to put cameras up I mean, like, trail cams were placed up, but not by the police. We've not really heard much else about that, right? About the trail cams. Like, are they still out there? Are they still recording? Or were they taken away? Makes you think, if there was, like, any any people suspicious of Candice Cooley Justin, would they be thinking that maybe the cameras were taken away at a certain point? Uh, with the trail cams still there pointing at the grain shed when um, Justin took that photo at the grain shed late at night? I mean, just like little questions like that. What do you think? Um, I don't know if we do a poll. Uh, let's do a poll right now. Do you think it's worth putting trail cams or keeping trail cams up still to this day or or not? Right. Is there anywhere else you could put them? Has anyone... It's very risky, this, but... Has anyone tried putting up cameras in certain areas which could record certain conversations? Is that even a possibility? I mean, when Justin overheard a conversation between Don Haightley and Jim Brennan previously in the past, you know, it happened there at that workshop. So maybe someone could visit to Montello, maybe try and put a camera up or some kind of recorder. I don't know. 
you think it's a good idea? Or has it already been tried? Right? And, and I, maybe it's happened with others, but I've not seen it too much. What else have we got? Happy New Year. Yep, Happy New Year. Teresa, I think she's been around for a while as well. Maybe the Kenny Reach case. It feels like it. That's good of them. Happy New Year's, Teresa. Or Teresa, however you say the name. And what does this one say? Brian says, this article is from Box Elder News Journal. Article is called 2022 Year in Review and was published December 28th, 2022. I found it online but requires a subscription to view access for the first month and all articles is free for the first month. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Brian. This is very useful, what Brian said. Now, I actually went onto that website as described there, and yes, you do need a subscription, and it and um, it's restricted, which is typical, you know. I assume it's only online from the way it looks, and it is, yeah, Box Elder News Journal article, and it's a year in review, okay? Just in case if it wasn't described in Doug's video, that's where you can find it, okay? Um, hmm, yeah. Now, as for the Shack Ladies comment, okay, so I just transitioned onto one of my community posts because that's where the Shack Ladies comment was at, if you were wondering, okay? We also have an, another person here called Catfish saying, why are you copying Doug? Well, my alternative response to you is, why do you have a default profile picture? Hmm? Quick look, zero videos, no surprise. Created 2022, no surprise. Dodgy account, dodgy, 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 whingy, whiny. Okay, well, there you go, the Shack Lady. Shack Lady says, it's unfortunate that now certain people want to talk about this. And I've touched a lot on this months ago. Hmm. Right, let's just double check what I how I worded it as. Unexpected live video premiere, okay. Talking about latest rounds info and mess ups by Box Elder. Yeah, it was very vague, right? Did the Shack Lady watch the video? Um, yeah. I mean, that's the only issue with the Shack Lady. Sometimes she tends to be kind of vague when she, uh, like, talks well like text okay it's like what are you exactly referring to she's saying that certain people all of a sudden want to talk about this i guess she means talk about the mess ups by box out county but i don't know who she's referring to exactly if she's referring to doug i mean doug has been talking about box out county mess ups for some time now because he's obviously been in association with Candice Cooley. So, like, who else is it? As for me, I've done a lot of videos every time looking at Box Elder County, coming up with the different ideas and theories. So it can't be me. Um, pancakes? Um, maybe. Jim Terry? Uh, he, well, like, he's been uh, going on about stuff since the beginning, so it can't be him. So... Who is Shack Lady really referring to? And she says that she's touched upon a lot of it months ago. And it's like, oh, why are people only talking about it now? Well, I mean, there's certain things to highlight is maybe if you talked about some key stuff back then, if you did a dedicated, singular, focused, concentrated, clear maybe visual video explanation on a certain thing with a specific clear bold title then everyone could refer back to it and use it as a reference point or add on to it right if you mention something very very important let's say you had the coordinates of where dylan was buried at and you put it in a video like three months ago but that video was titled 
Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory Golden Ticket Has Been Lost, and it's about six hours long, and for about five hours of it, you're basically hearing the, the Montello 2023 anthem by Betty Haywood, and it's like, okay, and... And then at a certain portion throughout the coordinates pop up on the screen, you know, who's going to see them, first of all? Who's going to know about them? Or it's going to click in their mind? Probably not. Who's going to actually sit there and watch all the way through up until that point? Who's even going to click on the video to begin with who will know that ah, the locations are revealed within that video? You wouldn't. It gets lost in a sea of thoughts, a sea of videos, right? So like when you see all those live videos and live streams where they talk about a range of stuff, which is good. And as a live experience, it's very good for people and people enjoy that. But for, you know, people that tag along afterwards or catch up later or just watch little snippets or just search it and then see it, they'll think, oh, it says live chat, live chat, discussion one, discussion two, discussion three. Oh, it doesn't really explain much in detail. There's nothing that stands out to me. So I assume the Shack lady probably did mention and touch upon important points back then, but how would I know when the titles of the videos are all very similar to one another? And you know what I'm saying? Now, as for maybe some of my videos in recent time, discussion, 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 because it is a discussion or it's reflecting back if anything important is found or there are new questions or people that come out with key information that arises, I make sure that I'll do a dedicated video to that stuff. And that as example, set up in place, like with Ty Corbin, what he said earlier, that's kind of like what I'm going to do. Okay. You would have seen it with when we've done map analysis in the past, right? Map analysis of Montello, looking at every possible point of interest. You remember that video? We came across almost like a graveyard and then that singular grave near to the Montello landing strip. At the time, it was mysterious. It was a bit interesting, um, but, you know, it, it was within a long video. So what I did at a later point, I did a 10, 11 minute video specifically referring back to it. I did like a, uh, another video specifically referring back to Kurt's back hoe and the wheels deflated. I think I may have done a dedicated video short one to the crutch found at Brenner's burnt down trailer, right? I followed on after, okay? So it didn't get forgotten about, okay? But I think when it comes to all these live streams and live call-ins, you're kind of dependent on the actual people watching live at the time to then, in hopes that they pass on the information later or share it with other people if um, others are busy or away doing other stuff in between, right? Whereas if you've got like a singular video clear straight to the point, you can just refer back to it anytime. What I will acknowledge, though, is maybe as for titles, it can be a bit difficult trying to word them specifically, trying to get the best balance so people can look for the stuff better, easier, quicker. I mean, when it came to the Kenny Veach case, you had just like a few key places. M Cave, uh, Mineshaft, Mojave Desert, Wild Horse Pass, you know, key named locations, the Sword Intent, you know, like that. But I guess when it came to the M cave, and Scott Natal demonstrated it, in a way he didn't really have much choice because there's not much else you can call it. He kept calling his videos M cave, big M cave, small M cave, M cave on side of cliff, M cave lower down, M cave at night or whatever, M cave daytime. It's like one of those where you look at it and you think, what, how many M caves are there? Well, reality is there's several out there, but the M cave has not truly been found yet. But there are several caves which share similar characteristics visually because it's in the shape of an M, hence why you call it that. What I've tried doing at times is calling it like a M-shaped cave, saying it's like a, it's kind of, but not that 100%. You would have seen in some of my title videos. As for Dylan Rounds, because it's kind of like a, maybe a bit more theory-based map analysis, mm, 
it tends to be a little bit more vague. And as well, as I said earlier at the start of this video, when you've got the character, the amount of characters, 100 characters, you're limited to what you can actually say. You might not be able to fully express yourself in the title, okay? So I, I cannot understand why some people would just call it a discussion, right, when it comes to the live videos. But you can't blame some people for forgetting or being a bit late to the party. I mean, as when it comes to information, right? So yeah, when I've covered videos, theories, locations, points of interest, equipment, sometimes people have said, didn't you already know? Why are you covering it now? It's already been solved. It's already been talked about months ago. There's that concept of either one, I didn't get around to time of covering it back then because I was looking at other stuff in between, thinking outside of the box, going down my own route of looking into the case, right? And then catching up on the other stuff. That's one way. And the second is, well, maybe I didn't know of that information because it was locked behind a paywall. If it was like a members only video live stream, I know the counterpoint could be, well, tough shit, become a member then. And it's like, well, I'm okay, I'm okay. But you can't just like throw it at me and say, how do, you, how do I not know this? How do I not know that? I mean, it's like the stuff that has been covered or talked about either has been like theory based, trying to use common sense, trying to piece it all together, or looking at external pieces of material, or just like, bits of public information and with time some of the people that have reached out like Mel, like Estef, like um, whoever else because there'll be a couple have shared bits of information or the odd photo, Glitter Galaxy and it's been very helpful, useful external material which I might not be able to get a hold of because of country but the material is of public information but you've got to try and find it to begin with. If there is certain material which isn't of public information and you can't get a hold of it, then it's kind of common sense. It makes sense to why you can't get a hold of it. And if it was such as behind a paywall, then it's like, well, you might not be able to access it, right? There'd be maybe like other people out there who just can't like, afford to access it, which is understandable, etc. So you just do what you can when it comes to covering it. And lastly, kind of referring to what we said before, you might cover something, you might talk about something and, oh, it's old news, but it's like, well, you might have not heard it before, okay? You might have not had the time to sit through a 12-hour live stream video just to hear one little sentence to say that Kurt took his dog out to wipe its bottom, you know? But here and there, someone does come on in and summarises it in 30 seconds. Don't you think that's more efficient and time effective, right? Ty Corbin's demonstrated it, time efficiency when clearing something up or answering one of my questions, which is good of him. Um, Indiana, summarising it at times. It, it's all of use. It's kind of happened the reversed way this time when I think about it. When it came to the Kenny Veach case, only a certain amount of people covered it, right? At one point, it was only two people, and that was it. Sean, Jeff, Clark, right? And maybe done a few forums elsewhere, but on YouTube, really two people, like, continuing. Not just telling the regurgitated story, but continuing it and searching in some way. I came along, and the odd other person did, and tried summarising it, or tried breaking it down, the footage, the findings, the online information, trying to organise it, categorise, explain, explore, adapt, uh, shift in a different focus direction, uh, make it clear, the titles, the playlist, you know, all of that. It came to the point where a year in, all these people showed up, like, during the month of November or the month before November, when there was over 400,000 people that viewed my channel and looked at all the different videos. It was, I don't know if it'll ever happen again, but it was, it was like a weird sudden storm of people. And obviously with that, there was a lot of questions, a lot of people asking this and that and wanting this and that. And I was able to like quick draw and pull out link after link after link of previous videos covered. So basically all what I did and all what other people did have set it up as blocks. So whenever anyone else comes along, 
down the line, they don't have to spend as much time researching because it's already there in place. And all you have to do is just click on it and watch it a little bit and then it will help you in some way, right? In this case, with the Dylan Brown's case, it's more collective because there's more people involved. So each person is helping one another out. One person's covering one thing to resolve it, to make sense. And then another person is stepping on in with additional information or counterpoints to summarize it. So it works hand in hand. You get what I'm saying? And speaking of the Kenny Beach case community or whatever, we can summarize it just like briefly now from like how it has developed with time. Okay. Uh, and then we'll move on to the, what's it called? The forum page. And we'll just look at at least one page due to timing. So how did I word it? At some point I kept saying that the Dylan Rounds community is more toxic than the Kenny Veach one. But I think I've kind of changed my mind. Technically, the Dylan Rounds case is a bit more volatile, but that's because there are more people and higher chances of it happening. Whereas with a smaller sample, uh, the community size of the Kenny Veach case, you could argue it's a little bit worse snakes in grass okay when it comes to the Kenny Beach case certain people how they switch and change of course in behavior but then down the line the way they just suddenly switch forces allegiances with one another and it's like what's going on inside your head hmm? you know there must be external stuff happening um could you say there's more emotional people in the Kenny Reach case than the Dylan? Now, Dylan Rounds probably has more emotional people, but the Kenny Reach one probably has the odd intense emotional person where they just flip out, act out, and it's like, what the hell's going on, right? Even other people are a bit confused, so that says something. Um, hmm. I'd actually say there's probably more impatient people when it comes to the Kenny Veach case community rather than the Dylan Rounds one. You know, whilst everyone else might have moved on to either how far, at a point in time still ongoing, or the Kylie Rodney case and stuff like that, and the all purpose adventures or all with purpose adventures, whatever the fuck you call them, where they jump in water and get wet. Um, even when that was being talked about and I stuck with um, Dylan Rounds, not really anyone complained. They just simply said, it's good that you're still being able to continue it, right? I mean, I can understand some people might be thinking, oh, like, how much more can you do? And it's like, well, as much as there's, like, material to cover or to try and make sense of, that's the way I see it. Um, and you've you got to take in mind that, although I've covered Kenny Beach longer previous compared to the Dylan Rounds one, the Dylan Rounds one's been a lot more relentless in terms of day-after-day -day video. And yet people have been patient, which is obviously very good of them. And like the like the level of appreciation for the map analysis is a lot higher too, which is uh, good as well. I guess it's like a, a unique thing, although it might be accessible. Not everyone uses it because they might just prefer to do boots on ground, but you can complement it with bird's eye aerial viewpoints to make sense of it both ways. But yeah, that was just a little update on the Kenny Beach case. Kind of volatile, kind of emotional there more whingy whiny that's saying something and snakes in the grass emerging right and maybe previous forces returning right but you know many of the obsessive people need autographs they can have one okay let's move on to the the forum page now of uh, dylan and continue that page eight is we'll just get through one page okay because of time and see what it says if there's anything of interest, anything that needs clearing up, right? That's what we're going to do. Okay, page eight, let's start reading. Grandma Bear says, and in response to a previous point, still, I disagree with it. They should at least be able to submit a request and pay for it for the account holder, and if they can, show an open case. It should be provided on a more urgent basis. JMO, of course, in my opinion, sure, won't change their ways. That's to do with the phone, okay? I, sh I assume. But I couldn't, like, access it. What's this? 
goes on to say, I don't know, but it does sound like Texas EquiSearch is sending an arsenal of various drones and other equipment, heat seeking, night vision, and for some type of thing that would help with mines. They also had other volunteers, including dog handlers, dog search teams, and cam. The bit where it says about night vision, do any of you know about nighttime searches? Has that ever happened in the Dylan Rounds case? Nighttime searches. Just a thought because as for most videos I've seen on the Dylan Rounds case, um, they've been searching daytime. I mean, it might have got dark later on and they're on the way back walking to the vehicle or to their home. Yes, granted, such as earthworm infotainment, but has anyone at any point gone out night time when it's approaching dark to go looking about. I know you could say, Ooh, well, that's a bit dumb and stupid walking around in the dark. You'll injure yourself. You know, you might get hurt. It's not practical. But I'm just taking it in mind with like how it says here about heat seeking and night vision. Like, do you really need it? You know what I'm saying? I know you could argue and say, well, you use it when you have to. If it gets later on in the day, you get caught up in it and it gets darker, you use it to assist you. Yeah, I understand that. But is there any kind of dodgy activity going on at night time, right? Was, hell, you put aside the search for Dylan, the time of when Dylan was disposed of or um, shady stuff was going on around then. Was there any activity late at night? Okay, and that's where we get on to the next point, right? The way it was worded previously by Candice Cooley, such as with the key fob and the gun being returned in a certain order, it would have been done overnight time because it was back to back. It was probably done in the midst of the dark at night, right? That's how it's been worded. So if that happened in the dark, then what else happened in the dark? I mean, it makes sense. It's dark, right? No one's really going to see. No one's really going to be present out there. Maybe, at least for the searchers, most would have gone home by then or be doing other things or locals nearby might be asleep, whatever it may be. But the dodgy people, the suspects or suspect, might have been operating when it was dark, when it was quieter, right? Just a worth a thought because there's already an example it's just trying to think, has there been any more examples? We're doing another poll now, and it might be a very vague one, okay? But don't blame me, blame Christy, because I know Christy likes her polls, okay? Actually, that sounds a bit weird, that. Polls in what you vote for, okay? So, do you think there has been any more, before or since, current dodgy nighttime activity? Yes, no, feel free to vote right now. Okay. What else do we have here? It says, well, the mother re relayed it and she is keeping the case based on facts as much as possible. Are you sure about that? And yes, she was saying his story changed constantly and there was no truth found to it. But just putting it out there is having no basis at this time, plus it does seem... It is the source of some of the misinformation or conflicting dates, etc. in the news, which makes the news a bit harder to trust as fact. It also kind of puts this Kurt guy on the radar, or he did that himself, I guess. Right, so that's to do, that's, yeah, that was to do with the previous page of uh, Kurt, how he kept switching and changing the story, and these people are agreeing as well. As for the mother, I wouldn't say she's completely sticking to the facts all the time, to be realistic, okay? Okay, as for the really out-of-the-box ideas of alien abduction or the Sasquatch kidnapping, yeah, okay, yeah, it's completely outside of the box, and she's um, stayed away from that. But we've seen there have been constant times of switching and changing of facts, right? Not just theories or loose ideas. Switching and changing of facts and stats, which is more of a serious thing. Oh my god, is that it? <coughs> what was with that blank bit in between? That was weird. What was this? No idea. Pretty sure she said he was, but it could be like Grandpa and Dylan both owning the farm. Family owned, so to speak. 
Now, Kurt does own and run the bar. From how it was worded by a local, I remember when they uh, um, left a comment way back then, they said that before Dylan's disappearance, the bar would be open every now and then, like once a week or so. But the local said to me that after Dylan's disappearance, the bar was open almost every single day. That's a bit weird, that, right? Why? Why would it suddenly be opened every single day? Is it because you feel like you can generate more business, get more people in, talking, hanging out? Like what? What's the whole point behind that? It's a bit weird, isn't it? I mean, is there still unfinished business at the Saddle Saw Bar? Does it need, like, a police raid? Does it need further investigations? What do you think? What about the uh, the cellar? Anything down there, hidden, locked up? What do you think? Bear in mind, some of these points and questions I have mentioned or listed in the past okay and i relay them from time to time to see if there is a follow-up take in mind not everyone always responds with an answer the first time so that's why give it a month or two you ask the same question again to see if anyone has an answer okay hence why some people misinterpret that as being stuck in the past, mentioning an old age question, but it's like, well, if no one answered it back then, there's no harm in checking up now, right? What else? Regina says, well, even that press release from Elko County wasn't, isn't completely clear to me. I mean, it says that the call to the grandmother was from his farm, but then it goes on to say the last cell phone communication from Dylan's phone was near his farm. Dylan disappeared sometime after we made that call. It wasn't near the farm. It was at the um, gate approaching the Grange Shed. And they're calling it Elko County press release. I thought there was never any press releases. Unless people have different um, definitions of what a press release is. You know. I mean, would you count it as a press release when it came to Candice Cooley being interviewed by the news crew outside of that courthouse when Brenner had his first court hearing or something, whatever you call it? I'm just trying to think. And there was actually one person, I've forgotten their name. One person, maybe the YouTube channel was called something to do with Utah, and uh, she actually sat inside the court when uh, Brenner was um, up on the stand or something. I can't remember what she said now, but if any of you know, or uh, if the person is watching right now, then they can uh, leave their own thoughts. Hmm. Guess who? There seems to be the same like members on here. It's not like different people. Maybe, maybe later on there might be. What's this? Again, it's just the text transcripts. They won't give. They'll give him the logs of the call and the text. They did it for the reasons listed above. It uses a lot of resources to do that, and if they did provide that service, too many would be taking advantage of it for the wrong reasons. That's why they don't. Too many openings for lawsuits. Okay, still do with the phone. Much is confusing in this case, but maybe they mean the communication was the late latter ping and not the call. His farm is confusing also as to where they mean sometimes various locations. So this is what, what we're reading right now isn't the end of the world, right? This person back then in June, only knew of what they knew. Times have changed, okay? So don't get confused by this. Do not. Being sued for giving an account holder his own information, if that is even a possibility these days, is wrong. It takes major resources to get years of copies of your own medical records and such too, but you have have a right to them and can get them quickly. Whether he is 19 or not, it was his dad's account. You know darned well that in such a case with bank records, they would be accessible too. Anyhow, at least, or hopefully, it sounds like they have the times and contact information. But we clearly, we're not being told all because the fact that phone likely went off radar at some point. I wonder when and where. When the last phone ping, yeah. And time back with uh, what Ty Corbin said about you tell me where it was found, right? And then as that talks about like the uh, and what an ATV or something being uh, 
buried in a bush or hidden in a bush. A bit odd, but then someone taking someone down down to there to explain the location, give it away. And then what, what do I remember in it? the Candice Cooley interview way back with uh, Doug saying that Avales was there, but he was at the police car or held at a police car and didn't go directly to the pond. But then what? It's worded elsewhere that he did or he did previously. Just some random little thoughts muttering off. Can you imagine if a company requested the transcripts of text of every company owned phone? It's a slippery slope, yeah. The owner of the phone can request a call info and text info or tell them who was called or text between. Anytime you felt like asking for them, would you even if you're doing absolutely nothing wrong? What are you wanting would make that possible if you had any shared account and any employee? I mean for the most part of it, we've not had too many issues with the phone, right? Would you say there's any unfinished business with the phone pings uh, data on the phone? Do you feel like that? Or is there no more leads? We'll do another poll right now, I guess. The poll can be something like, whether it be, let's just associate it with Dylan's phone. Or maybe we can do it in a vague way. Let's do it as a vague poll. Do you believe that there are still bits of data and new leads that you could get from looking at the phones or reanalyzing them? Or is it like over and done with, time to move on to the next piece of evidence? Feel free to vote. Guess who says, again, why hasn't the show's department requested this? I am really am learning to believe the mum that they are not doing much at all and their explanation was BS or they might have and not let the parents know or it's just not back yet. It can take weeks for the info. See, this is the thing. Throughout the case, one thing that's remained somewhat consistent is the argument for and against the LE. You know, people say that the LE are not doing the job. Other people say they are, but they can't release stuff because it might harm the case and they've got to follow a procedure. That's how it's always been, right? I've kind of been back and forth between the two ideas and concepts because I do understand that, you know, you can't release everything. But from how it's been worded at times with certain key events, it's kind of like, hmm, seems a bit dodgy. Anything else? It says, well, the media is still saying things like boots found near his truck at his farm. I don't remember hearing that. But personally, I've always understood that there are two locations five miles apart. What's clear to me since that last video is that the 640 acres is where his farm is and that other property belongs to somebody else. Although, there's info he was working on buying that too. It's like the grain shed. About the cell info from Elko County, I just find it confusing because first they say from the farm, but go on to describe it as near. Also, they say last cell phone communication rather than then ping. Well, yes, last cell phone communication at the gate, approaching the grain shed, also known as the pole shed. As for the last ping, near or literally at Lucin Pond. Okay, so that clears that up. But this person, Regina, seems to have had their head somewhat screwed on better than maybe other people in the early days. Um, I wonder, like, from my point of view, would it have been any easier... If I followed the case from the beginning, would it have made it any better? I don't know. Maybe I would have grasped theories and uh, rumours quicker than catching up with now, I guess. But you, you can't, like, move on to a case, like, immediately if you're already stuck in a previous one. Does that make sense? That's why I've not, like, jumped ships since, because of Dylan case. What's this? It's what they do and the rules they have, so it isn't worth going on about it. But no, I disagree. If you want privacy, you keep your own account, and on top of that, cell phones or internet and privacy are debatable. Anyhow, both spouses can access just about anything else that is joint at any time, and if you share a cell phone account, you can also track the other or your children. So that doesn't compute to me. As for an employer, if they provide the phone and service, well, you darn well better be aware of it. 
And the same with email. And if an employer wants to secretly camera the workspace, that's all legal in most places to my knowledge and you have no expectation of privacy. I can see the burden of providing the cell phone records, but for most things out there, if you fill out the appropriate requests and authorization records and provide for instance, as I said, medical records of your own, that's a burdensome one for medical facilities and many high outside companies or contractors take care of records just as some do for the burden. Okay? I'm not talking about getting records quickly on a whim. We're talking about crimes here or missing people where time matters. I think there should be an avenue where the father is your account holder. Mm, whatever. What's this? Grandma Bear says apparently they lied about not knowing how to access phone records, etc. And then they said something else and claimed the grandma misunderstood. But mom said no, she didn't. They had the recorded conversations and she listened to it. Okay. I don't know either. I mean, like, as for the, the referring to the police handling the records and stuff... Like, if they were a bit quicker and more proactive, they could have got a hold of Brenner's phone, right? Um, I can't remember now. Was Brenner's phone found? Or, like, no, not found, but was it just... Is it still held for evidence? Yeah? I guess so. It might as well be if Brenner's in um, jail at the moment. But didn't find anything on uh, Brenner's phone because uh, the data... I guess expired after so many days. So that's a shame. But what about Don Haley's phone? Has has anyone checked Don Haley's phone? Has anyone checked Kurt Wadsworth's phone? What happens if you secretly, you know, had a little look at it, right? Would it reveal anything? Would it show anything? Any past text conversations? I mean, I guess one thing you've got to take in mind is people can delete and try and erase stuff, but you can track some things down at least. But then again, the other thing you've got to take in mind um, not so much with Dylan, if it applied to others, like with Dylan having an iPhone, if Brenner had one, an alternative, if Kurt Wadsworth's got an iPhone, if Taylina, the daughter, has an iPhone, if Don Haley has an iPhone, then maybe try and check the iCloud, right? You know, it could be photos, videos, or other bits of media, files, which have been uploaded to the cloud or indirectly, because sometimes, or maybe it happens often, when you do get an iPhone, certain settings can be turned on, left on, or with updates. The settings are automatically turned on, which can be annoying. Um, if you're not too familiar with a phone, a smartphone, or you don't like look too deeply into it, you might leave certain settings on when they may be better turned off. So through that little slip up, maybe some kind of material evidence leads could be found through the iCloud, providing they've got an iPhone, right? Or something similar, the equivalent. Um, what's the other one? Microsoft Cloud or something, something like that. Let me know. Is there anything else here? says, I don't know either. I think the mom is expecting things that no department would do much differently even if they should do it better. They don't share all with family and it isn't unusual to separate family members in what they tell them either or have a different detective talk to each family member being there before. On the other hand, they're not doing some things or being responsive to the family until she complains publicly and apparently that's not okay by a long shot either and it sounds as if they have outright lied. The handling of the boots is questionable. The sheriff's wife making contact, sure raises eyebrows, etc. The sheriff's wife making contact. Well, I know where you had that like two on one confrontation, but what did the sheriff make calls to Candice as well? For text transcripts, not just text info, they couldn't access anyway. They know how to get sub subpianas. I'm not sure of that. Why haven't they? They actually haven't, beyond me. The more the sheriff's department tries to justify themselves, only leads me to believe the mom more. Oh my God, why is this longer than I thought? I think maybe because there are two locations and then a 640-acre family farm, and at times we hear his farm, and then there's other guy whose property, yes, he wants to buy, which is another farm, I guess. Plus it said Dylan already has bought a bit of land from him or something like that. 
in kind of the case. I get the impression Dylan isn't on the family farm or land that he got from the farmer, whatever. Ellie should have warrants or cause now. I see transcripts would be private unless a cause case. However, I'd think with he and his fair and more missing and all of his vehicles present, they likely have ample cause and I'm sure hope they got after it by now. Ari de Boots, I recall it in that video where it was said that the spot on the boots was positively blood, yet there was no mention question as to whether it was compared. Yeah, and they weren't taken and protected as evidence and were not turned in right away, the way it sounded. If they do compare or test the blood, not sure they would not comprise the boots as evidence. I mean, the thing is, those boots, as described by Brenner, oh, I left them out there. Uh, they've been there for some time. And Kenny's colour saying, well, they're still fresh. Obviously, they've not been weathered enough. But, you know, if Kenny's Cully wasn't aware of the boots to begin with, the family weren't, but the police were, and they just left them out long enough for him to weather an age with time, then it would tie in line with what Brenner was saying. So it makes you think, in a weird way, with the LE trying to mess with evidence or adjust it in a certain way, which would fit right with what Brenner was saying at the time. Bit odd, that. Okay, final point. Yeah, it's inexplicable that if it appeared to be blood, why it wasn't properly collected and analysed, and to my point, once confirmed, DNA tested and compared. But apart from that circumstance, and despite the environment, and that it was days later, there should have been an attempt to collect some other source of DNA. Mm -hmm. Okay, so hopefully some of that maybe was of use to you or it may have even highlighted more questions or issues feel free to note it down below as said this was a video easing into the new year okay as for these forums or looking back on them they do i think go up to like october or something so it's not the latest but it's like looking back in between right that's why i don't upload these videos every single day because it would get a little bit not draining but tiring not for me but for people that watch because you don't want to see the same thing regurgitated over and over again in the same format so you just drop these in in between here and there to try and just at least keep the case alive and I might have said it before but it's still an important point sometimes some of the videos like this to outsiders they might not be of much use but on the inside, the live chat is where it can be very useful. People might just suddenly mention a point or something completely new, never talked about before. Then that follows and leads into a completely different video. So there's always a positive behind it, either raising awareness, keeping Dylan Brown's case alive, and also people being informed about new stuff, or just simply keeping it alive and then new people adding on in terms of the live chat. So it's all good and it's appreciated um, the people in the chat. Okay, from start to finish and throughout all the previous videos. So I think that's it for now. Okay. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Next time we are doing the map analysis. We're doing a breakdown, a storytelling one with key points, key questions. And it's to do focus with Kurt, what's with Brenner. Okay. So make sure to be on the lookout for that. I'm going to get into it. Hands on. Not literally, but you know what I'm saying. So I'm going to go to bed now. Not literally, but it's just part of the video to make it look special. Okay. I'm going to bed. Okay. Indiana. There's not enough room. Okay. Oh, no. You know, I've noticed. I'll say one thing. All these times when it's come to the motel videos, you remember the motel videos? You remember the the occasional chair at the end of the bed? How it was like, why the fuck would you have that there? Why do you have a chair at the end of your bed or the corner of, of your room? Is it, are you just supposed to sit there in the dark and scare the person when they wake up? Literally, I've only just realised now I've got a chair in the corner as well at the end of the bed. So it's like, oh my God. I'm not, I'm no better, am I? So I think on that note, it's time to go, literally. So goodbye. Why do I have a hand here? Goodbye and good night, okay? I'm going to sleep. I'll tell you my, my, my underwear size, what size, if I wear like long socks or like ankle, 
I think, I don't fuck, I can't remember what type pants I wear. Um, 